the classification of species into distinct animal kinds is called taxonomy. These parrotfish play their part in a complex symbiotic relationship where many different forms of life all help to keep each other alive. Corals provide a platform for algae to grow, but if algae grows too much, it smothers the reef and the corals die. The parrotfish provides an invaluable service to the coral reef by consuming the algae. He does this with a strong beak perfectly made just for scraping the corals. Unfortunately, he sometimes bites off pieces of the coral whilst feeding, which he later excretes as sand. The cycle doesn't stop there. An army of sea cucumbers and crustaceans then clean the sand, looking for small particles of food. Corals and sea fans also clean the water, which is vital for all aquatic life to survive. Scientists used to think that parrotfish were destroying the reef. But recent studies now prove that when parrotfish are prevented from feeding on an area of reef, the reef is quickly covered by algae and dies. Parrotfish have some amazing features. Like many fish, their scales are incredibly sensitive to water pressure and movement. This means they can swim in a school and never bump into each other. Another interesting trait of the parrotfish is their ability to change sex, and when they do, their color. This ability gives them a greater chance of survival should large numbers of one sex be destroyed. Incredibly, certain parrotfish also change their color to match their surroundings. This is quite remarkable, given that they're colorblind. The incredible variety of parrotfish worldwide adds color and diversity to coral reefs. But their symbiotic relationship with the corals raises serious questions about the origins of life and calls into doubt the traditional evolutionary model taught today. Coral reefs and coral reef fish cannot survive without each other. And if they can't now, did they ever? The logical conclusion is that they have always lived together. With our modern understanding of DNA, the changes that evolutionists require are wishful thinking, and symbiotic relationships seriously question the idea that different forms of life evolved at different times. So is there further evidence that seriously undermines this theory?